Hey, what's up guys, Rip here. So there's a very noticeable phenomenon on Twitter where people will notice the censorship of overseas products, particularly those from Japan, and they'll say that this censorship is likely the result of companies trying to appeal to an overseas audience. Now, typically when these observations are made, those same observations are mocked by people on Twitter, particularly a lot of woke people who will simultaneously say that this censorship is happening and it's actually a good thing, while also saying that you're a conspiracy theorist for thinking it's happening in the first place. Now, more often than not, those conspiracy theories turn out to be true. And today we have an example of that with Dragon Quest. So a lot of people have been talking about recent censorship of Dragon Quest and people were told they were crazy for thinking this was something that was happening. But now we have an interview, including the Dragon Quest creator comes out and just outright confirms that these things have been censored definitely with a interest in appealing to an overseas market where even the creator seems like they understand that this is all ridiculous and it seems like it's something that is pushed upon their team by someone else. Now, of course, if we're dealing with Dragon Quest, we're dealing with Square Enix here, who has been criticized for censoring a lot of games in appeal to the global audience that a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of Japanese companies have been appealing to over the past couple of years. On top of that, up until very recently, you would see Square Enix listed on the client list of Sweet Baby. Only a few days ago, their name was removed from this list. Now, it's unclear whether that is a complete disassociation with Sweet Baby or they're just trying to hide their association, at least publicly. We don't know what the answer is, but a lot of people are making their guesses. Now, we're talking about Dragon Quest III Remake here. So this is coming out in November, obviously a remake of a very classic game here. And there's been concerns about this right from the get-go. So, back in July of this year, people noticed that gender has been removed from the game. In fact, they used the dreaded Type A and Type B types instead of traditional biological genders like male and female. Which is not only just a bunch of pandering and virtue signaling nonsense, but it also makes things more confusing in the game because... In that game, there's other jobs that are no longer distinguished by gender and name, so it makes things very confusing in some aspects. So it's not just virtue signaling, it's actually hurting the product itself. On top of that, only a few weeks ago, we saw people pointing out, a lot of Japanese gamers pointing out, that some of the iconic Dragon Quest designs have been censored. And this one with the warrior character here is one that a lot of people have really enjoyed with her, her bikini armor. Bikini armor, this is something that is uh, very popular in Japan, this design and this character. And you can see the censorship is very obvious. On the left, you have the original design. Here's the censored one. They basically added a pair of shorts underneath there, which obviously cover up the top part of her legs and her hips. And then they put a crop top under her bikini armor here, which obviously covers up her chest. And a lot of people were very upset about this, especially on the Japanese side of Twitter, because they're now seeing these games censored on their end. It's not just localizations that are getting censored in the process of going to the English audience. They're getting censored at the base. The Japanese product itself is being censored for this global market. Now, of course, as I mentioned earlier, the usual suspects on Twitter will see complaints about this censorship and they'll say uh, it's actually a good thing and that it's not a big deal and just get over it. Well, as I always say, if it's not a big deal, then why did you do it in the first place? If it wasn't a big deal, why did they feel the need to censor this iconic design that has existed for many years completely untouched? It's just an unnecessary change. And if you don't like this design or it bothers you morally or something like that, then just don't play the game. It's that simple. But like I said, a lot of people on the Japanese side of Twitter were very angry. Here's one tweet a lot of people have pointed out saying, uh, why are you doing this? The female warrior from Dragon Quest is one of the most monumental figures in Japan's bikini armor culture. Of all things, it was a remake of Dragon Quest III. How stupid. I want all involved parties to apologize at Akira Toriyama's grave. Even if you have to succumb to political correctness, don't do it in Akira Toriyama's style. Some very strong words there. Now, what's interesting is there's been a recent interview including a former Shonen Jump editor-in-chief as well as uh, editor-in-charge of Dragon Ball, but also the Dragon Quest creator were interviewed where they they basically went over all of these censorship concerns and made it very clear that this is something that is being forced upon them 
in order to appeal to an overseas market. あとすごい話題になってたそのコスチュームとか当時とそのままなのかどうなのかみたいなのがありましたよね、ーまた。<笑>まあねあの、いろいろ規制もあってね、露出してきちゃいけないとかね。なあそこ、まあ、ちょっとあんまり深掘りする気はないんですけど、いいのに、だってフィクションだけど、その中にあ主人公というあなたが入って冒険するっていうことでいいじゃないと思うんですけど、違うんですかね。<笑>な,なんですかね、よくわかんないですけどね、これについてはね。ゲームだしねフィ,まあ、フィクションという自分の中のこうバーチャル体験での,あのノンフィクションだから楽しくければいいのにっていうふうに思っちゃいますけどね,ね、うん、あんまり露出すると、ね、年齢が上がっちゃうっていうね全、まあね、年齢で中ちまうっていうのがあったりとか、まあ、ルールがやっぱなんか各国違ったりするんでね、うん、広くろうと思うと一番厳しいところに合わせざるを得ないとか、うん、でも当時そんなこと思わなかったですけどね<笑> So you can see in that clip they address the whole Bikini armor being censored, it seems like it's a very obvious reason why. It's because they want to appeal to a broader audience. And you can see right off of the bat, there's something very odd here. It seems like they're almost doing this against their will. It doesn't seem like this is something that, especially the creator, is on board with. This is something that they are doing because they're being told to by likely their people at Square Enix. And that's just kind of the way it is. And it shouldn't really surprise anyone, but It's obviously very concerning that they're making these preemptive censorship changes to appeal to the global market where it's even affecting the Japanese product itself. That is a very concerning thing, especially when it's going against the wishes of the creator of the products. ある種のね、あなんだろうな、絶対心と言うべき、善の名を借りた悪みたいなのがある。<笑>あの、全員が。不快感を覚えないなんてことはないわけ。綺麗汚いとかさ、善悪って人それぞれに感じ方があるわけじゃん。はいはい、で、物事はやっぱり。根っこにあるのは、やっぱり。絶対やっちゃいけないことだけいくつかって、それをさえやらなきゃあとはいいじゃない。うそういうのがないわけ。はいはい、だから、やっぱり。あのー。欧米、英米の方から、欧米の方から来てる、その。宗教的な概念から来る、その正教徒の考え方ってアメリカにあるじゃない。You can see him constantly mentioning this whole thing about compliance. It seems like they are at the mercy of whoever they're dealing with in this situation, where they have to comply fully with everything they're being instructed to. And in this case, it seems like it's constantly involving censorship of outfit designs or anything that could possibly offend anyone overseas. And as always with these things, I wonder who is in their ear. Who is in the ear of these publishers and developers telling them these demands? Because these don't reflect the average gamer in America or in the West. They reflect the crazy beliefs of a bunch of whack jobs on Twitter and a bunch of woke people who are destroying the industry. It's very odd. I don't know who convinced all these studios this is the path to take because they don't even seem to understand what's going on. They basically are just like, well, this is the way it is. This is an overseas market we don't understand. We just have to do these things because that's what we're supposed to do. And that's not really the case. They're just being manipulated by someone like Sweet Baby, a, a company like them, these consultation firms who are coming in and telling these people you need to appeal to this global market by censoring yourself. あの区切ってやらなきゃいけない少年ジャンプの漫画だったらサーティンアップ13歳以上じゃないと出せない、うん、私は全部リテイクれなきゃいけないでそれを訴訟が起きるそのために保険も入らなきゃいけない、うん、もうこんなねバカなクイーンとね<笑>やるのは本当面倒くさいでそっから日本も悪影響を受けてやってるから、うん、主人公もね男女を選べるんだけど、うん、男を女選ぶってかいけないのね、うん、タイプ1タイプ2なのね<笑>ねえ<笑>の<笑>これ男女誰が一体文句言うんだろうと思うんだけどそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそう The Western audience, in particular Americans, want. And you can see that last line too like, who is even upset about this stuff? 
and that's the truth. Who is upset about these things? You know, a lot of these companies, they appeal to a bunch of screechers on Twitter, but they don't represent what people actually want. That's why Sweet Baby is getting destroyed. That's why companies like them are being rejected left and right because their values and their wants don't reflect what gamers want. And the proof is in the pudding. Look at anything associated with companies like Sweet Baby. They are failing. And companies that are saying no to this DEI and woke nonsense, they're succeeding. Like Game Science with Black Myth Wukong. They got a lot of goodwill with gamers by simply saying no to this stuff. And you can see the, the trickle effect across the industry all the way over into Japan. We're now at a base level. The Japanese products are being censored to cater to a bunch of morally righteous weirdos living in the West who have no authority or shouldn't have any authority to control how these products are being censored or packaged to go overseas. But for now, that's going to do it for this video. If you want to watch this whole interview, I will put a link to it in the description. But for now, it's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. As always, feel free to share your thoughts about today's topics in the comments section down below, and I'll see you guys next time.